Watch this video to quickly learn how to use the web editor. So let's break down this interface into three parts. You have the top bar here, then you have a space in here where you can communicate with your team members, and then down below you have the space where you do the translation. So in the top bar, you can see the name of the document you're translating and in which language you're translating it into. And then here you have two buttons. Confirm translation, you should click on it only after you have translated all the sentences here, because this button will lock the document and will send a notification, an email to the document owner telling them that you completed the translation. Pre-translate instead, it's a feature that you can use to quickly fill up all the translations that you have inside this document using pre-approved translations, so translation memories, and machine translation. So after you launch this feature, you can come back here and check that the translations are dead automatically were okay or if they need some edits. In here, you can communicate with your team members or other translators. So this tool is fully collaborative. So the document owner might invite a translator and a reviewer. So if you want to communicate with the document owner or with another translator, you can type the at symbol and then you can type their name and select in here the person that you want to tag. So in this case, I'm speaking with Maria and I'm just gonna add text here and I'm gonna press return. So leaving this mes message here means that I'm sending also an email to Maria to tell her that inside here, I left a comment for her and she can come inside here and she can leave a message for me. So when she enters inside this document, we will see here popping up her avatar. And here you can see that Maria is viewing my document. So if I scroll down, I can actually see that Maria is editing one of the translations here for me. So as I mentioned before, this tool is built to be collaborative. So it means that also other team members can leave translations in here or can communicate with you. If you want to start doing the translation, we can go down here and here for some documents, we find a page preview. We can click on it to make it a little bit bigger. In here, we can find the text that was extracted from the document. And here is the space where you can add your translation. So to add a translation, we are going to click on this box here and immediately we see that there are some suggestions down the translation. So this suggestion comes from translation memories. So this is a translation that we already did in a previous document and Dredacon is telling you that you can use this translation if you want and it gives you a percentage of accuracy. So in this case, it's 87% because the sentence that we are translating, it's a little bit different compared to what we translated already before. Down here instead, we can find some suggestions that come from machine translations. And if we want to use one of these suggestions, we can just click on it and automatically this translation is added here. Then down here, if we want, uh, again, we see the different uh, suggestions that Radokan is giving us. And we see the difference in here between uh, the translation that we did in the past and the one that we're doing now. But if we want, we can type the translation in here. For example, I'm just going to type brochure 2015. And then I can press the return key to save the translation and move to another one. So in this new translation, we see that there are some indicators, some leader numbers here, and these are tags. So these indicate changes of styles. So for example, you see in design here, in our original document, it was written in bold and in color. So Vedicon is showing you that uh, there is a change of style in here. We have to tell Vedicon where it should put the change of style. So if we want, we can use one of the suggestions here. And if in the translation that we translated in the that we did in the past, the changes of styles were the same, Vedicon will add automatically these changes of styles. That happens also with machine translations. So if we if we select this machine translation, you see that automatically these tags are added to our translation. But if we need to add these tags ourselves, we can type the translation in here. Then we can type the tab key to place a change of style, and then we can complete the translation and press the return key to save the translation in here. Another way to add the translations to, to this box here is to keep press Ctrl and Shift. And here you see that some numbers pop up. So this indicates the hotkey that you can press 
to fill up the translation in here. So again, Ctrl, Shift, and then I press 1, and I'm going to use this translation to fill up my translation in here. I can press Ctrl, Shift, 2 if I want to use this other one. Another thing I wanted to show you is if I'm not sure about this translation, I'm not sure how I want to uh, translate this, I can click on here and I can leave a comment. So also here I can tag my colleague Maria and I can ask her anything that I want to ask and press return. So here I left a message and Radicon will send an email to Maria to tell her that there is a comment for her that she should uh, and she should get back to me. Another feature I wanted to show you is that if you scroll down here, you can see that, for example, Manage is using more parts of my document. So if we type a translation here, a random translation, and then we save the translation, the tool is going to ask you if you want to use this translation everywhere. And if we click on Use Same Translation, you see that down here, this translation is added automatically. But then if we don't like this translation, we can replace it, and the tool is going to ask us if we want to replace that translation everywhere. So we can click on update here and this translation is updated automatically. Some other things I wanted to show you is how these filters work. So you have three filters that you can use in Vatican. Search, translation, and show here. So show, you can just see uh, sentences that have comments, empty translations, uh, draft translations, or all sentences. And then here you have these fields where you can type something. So for example, I'm going to type radical. And I'm going to see here only the sentences that have radical written inside. And in here, I can type radical again, and I'm going to see only the sentences that in both sentences have written radical. So um, this is all for the web editor. If you have any question, you can click on here, and there is a help center. Uh, you can get in touch with us, or you can check the help guides yourself. And another thing I want to show you, if you scroll down here, you have this little button here that can allow you to go uh, at the top of the page very quickly. And if you click on this other button here, you can go very quickly to the first empty translation and you can start with the translation. So this is how the web editor works. And I hope this video was clear. Uh, let me know, uh, reach out to us if you have any questions or if something here was not clear.